You know, I love podcasting. I have since 2006, back when you had to use like a Dixie cup with string to make the thing work. And that's why I'm so excited that we recently moved Mysterious Goings On to Anchor FM to record our podcast. I got to tell you, I don't regret it a bit. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. I'm not going to lie to you, when I first heard about Anchor, I was a little dubious because I've been doing it the hard way for so long. But I got to tell you, it's very easy. Use a Stripe account get sponsors, you're not paying monthly hosting fees, sound quality is great, the distribution is phenomenal. Friends, download the free Anchor app today if you want to start your own podcast or go to anchor.fm to get started. Remember, you heard it here first on Mysterious Goings On. Welcome back to Mysterious Goings On. Hey, it's me, Alex Greenwood, your faithful host, and I wanted to check in with you because I had a few thoughts on what's going on with me during this pandemic. Trust me, it's not going to be a long, rambling episode, but I did post an essay to Medium recently, and I thought, I'll spare your eyes and I'll read it to you. I'll share this with you really quickly. So, Sit back, relax, and you can listen to me talking about burying the lost routine. The worst things, of course, are death, panic, and the emotional and economic cruelty of this disease. This must be understood. However, for many of us, hell, probably most of us, sheltering at home, cut off from routine, fresh faces, and the emotional room to breathe freely, inertia is the most insidious symptom of the dreaded new normal. Again, I have been lucky, being so far spared the more biblical aspects of this virus. Yet the inertia of quarantine exacts a toll, even while safely ensconced in a comfortable bunker. I'm an annoyingly hypervigilant person in many ways, for reasons I won't elaborate upon. I started paying attention to the burgeoning pandemic in January. This was before it was a pandemic, and instead, to most, just another forgettable segment on the news about something happening in faraway places. By February, I was laying in supplies. I amassed plenty of toilet paper and spam. I mean, lots of spam, which I had not eaten since I was in my ham salad days. (laughs) But it seemed the appropriate bunker food to stock up on. By March, I was throttling back social interactions and shopping, telling my spouse that it was time for us and our 11-year-old daughter to decline social occasions. By April, we were bunkered in our home in the American Midwest, secure in the knowledge we were safe. I envisioned setting a kind of routine, not unlike the introduction to the character Desmond Hume on that one-time TV sensation, Lost. I'd awaken on our little island here amidst the suburbs and embrace the routine. Check the computer for work stuff. Uh, Desmond was entering numbers to prevent the island from exploding or something. Exercise, do chores, eat what was delivered, and listen to Mama Cass until this whole crazy thing blew over. Looking for a silver lining in my regular hikes to nearby woods, I talk myself up about the abundant time to finish writing my latest mystery novel and step up podcast production. I'd finally fix my company and author websites and prospect more effectively for new clients. Joy of joys, I would read books again. Yes, and spend more time with my kid, work on my cooking skills. Maybe dig a victory garden in the backyard. Sure, I'd miss going to the gym, but there were home workouts and restorative hikes nearby. This was going to work out fine until the world got back to normal. As the hubbub of the new died down, I was left to make things happen. Time to get that routine going, Desmond. Those numbers don't enter themselves. So I jumped in, wrote a couple of pieces for local publications, and did some TV appearances on the joys of working from home and the soon-to-be ubiquitous virtual happy hour. I answered a couple of stray RFPs, one where I was clearly the stalking horse for a local government agency ticking fair bidding boxes so they could hire the firm they already preferred, and then I made a list of things to do. 
My days as Desmond lasted about two weeks. It had set in that the pandemic wasn't going away anytime soon, and it had effectively put my decade-old consulting business in a deep coma. Of course, I had expected a downturn, but naively had not projected a complete withdrawal of clientele. That first couple of weeks, I still had some projects to finish, but each passing day, clients expressed doubts that they could keep their businesses afloat, let alone hire me. Others just simply faded out. I'm immensely grateful to and a tad envious of my brilliant wife, who managed to not only hang on to her job, but remotely interview for and earn a new gig in April. <laughs> so I drifted a bit, binged a few shows, and quickly grew bored with TV. I started a cocktail-making show on Facebook to cheer things up a bit, did the virtual happy hour thing with friends, drank more than usual. My sleep became erratic, as I would often wake up at 2, 3, or 4 a.m. and just toss and turn. I experienced vivid nightmares for the first time in years. Yet I clung to the rope of routine, even as it frayed and inertia slowly set in. It was soon just easier not to do much of anything. Reading was difficult. I would reread the same page, failing often to fully grasp its meaning. Writing? <laughs> yeah, right. I barely had the focus to get a third of the way to my typical thousand words a day. Exercise at home became mundane and not nearly as productive as having a trainer in my face. I stopped working out almost entirely. That, in turn, did not help my mood. I grew short-tempered. I did keep both my podcasts going, mostly by cornering other stuck-at-home professionals for interviews. I lit up social media with takes on politics and PR. But overall, it just became easier to put things off beyond the simple home chores that I found almost as therapeutic as my walks in the woods. We are fortunate our daughter's public school system offers excellent online learning, and she is busy with schoolwork at least six hours a day. The rest of the day she spends on the house party app playing games with her friends. We go on occasional bike rides together, which is a blessing. My wife works long days, often taking over my practically unused office to handle meetings and get some peace. That's not to say that they don't have bad days, but I envied my wife and daughter their obligations. Some days left me fuzzy-headed and glum. After 10 years of running my own successful business, I just didn't feel I was contributing, and I firmly believe we all need meaningful work in our lives. I considered volunteering somehow, but as an asthmatic in his 50s, I don't think it's safe to go out into the world much, at least not until there's a viable treatment or vaccine. But I had to find a way past the hopeless inertia. The dishwasher became a sort of Tetris game, where I challenged myself to find creative ways to load and unload it more efficiently without breaking anything. I mowed the lawn, observing my possible future across the street as two retired neighbors seemingly cut their grass every other day. I used to think that was funny. I guess I don't anymore. I began a vigorous campaign to regularly sweep and mop the floors and disinfect every surface. These were my sneak attacks on any insurgent virus, whether it was in the house or not, with Mr. Clean as first sergeant and the tidy bull man heading up the Navy. The house would be clean by God. That said, nothing started to change much until I got my hands dirty. As the spring temperatures finally came around, the three by eight foot plot of dirt to coax buds to bloom and vegetables to take root became an island within the island that is our lost house. The labor of digging the plot, of painstakingly growing seedlings inside until ready for planting, has helped. That and the more abundant sunlight and fresh air, my severe tree allergies are just the cost of doing business. The garden somehow marked a day when I finally gave up on my lost routine. It was something my wife and I could do together. It is something that needs daily care that we hope will pay off with fresh peppers, tomatoes, and carrots. But even if it doesn't fill our bellies, gardening reminded me that sometimes the best way to solve a problem is to come at it from another angle. I'll spare you florid sentences of becoming back sore and one with the soil. Those things happen, but what it really did was clear my head. It's perfectly understandable, given the viral sort of Damocles we live under, to give in to the urge to jab a hateful finger or fire off a middle one at the invisible nemesis threatening to steal our hope. We make defiant plans and cling to our routines because there lies comfort. There lies normality. But I've learned that making plans and attempts to bend a pandemic's effects to my will are as fruitless as an untended garden. I feel better these past two weeks. I sleep through the night, mostly. I'm not so short-tempered. I'm exercising more, writing again, finding creative ways to serve spam. 
and spending less time trying to master things I cannot control. I tend to my garden. I weed it, feed it, and protect it from varmints. I bury my inertia in its soil and let the sun do its work. A little flexibility can go a long way. By refinancing your newer used auto loan with PenFed, you can lower your monthly payments for more flexibility in your budget. You can even schedule your first payment for up to 60 days from the date of your refinance. Calculate how much you can save at penfed.org slash auto refi or call 1-800-247-5626 to apply. Membership is open to everyone. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. It's a great time to get a great deal on a new car when you get approved for an auto loan from PenFed. Our powered by True Car rates are as low as 1.39% APR on new vehicles. Finance for a longer term to lower your monthly bill. Plus, take up to 60 days to schedule your first payment. Join PenFed and together we'll keep you moving forward. Anyone can apply. Visit PenFed.org slash auto or call 1-800-247-5626. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA.